All right, so part two would be how the heck am I going to get that trimmed off here to be a radius up there? Well, I am going to do a sketch and grab this line and this line. And that creates a position sketch. Now, that can only work if when you hit sketch this um, button right here is not blue if I try and sketch right now it won't let me grab those lines it's just gonna make me grab the face which you can do as well <clears throat> but I like to do position sketch so I'm gonna go sketch and turn this button here off that will allow me to grab these two lines I'm going to just kind of use that as reference. Mm. I'm going to swap H and V and select OK. <clears throat> Normal to view. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> I'm going to sketch an arc. I'll come, I don't know about here, over to here, over to here, and hit a constraint, and say OK. <clears throat> if I look at the drawing, it tells me that this radius is 14 and a half inches. So I'm going to double click this and go to 14.5. <clears throat> Oh no, my, okay, that's weird. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to constrain this point. That's going to be the tricky part. Hopefully you guys don't have the problem with the cursor I'm having. I got that point and I'm going to grab that vertical line, which is my axis. And I put that right in the center. Okay, I'm going to lock that to the center. I'm going to do one last trick. I'm going to <clears throat> select the curve and use my control button and grab this surface. And what I'm going to do is go to my dialog box and I'm going to pick tangent. What that does is that puts that curve tangent to that edge and this six inch holds it right in the center. <clears throat> I'll select OK. The part is fully constrained. Remember we always want things fully constrained. Now that was sketch number two <clears throat> which I did want in the geometrical set. When I exit out the reason why I wanted it the geometrical set as we learned in the prior lessons we've learned a feature called extrude and that extrude is found in generative wireframe and surfacing what I can do is create an extruded surface and I'm just gonna mirror it so I know I'm going completely through the part and not just use a random number that's gonna be for sure through the part and preview that it was one inch the gauge thickness of the part was only a quarter inch <clears throat> so I know that this surface goes all the way through that solid select OK and I will go back into the part design the reason why I got to go back to part design is I want to do something with that surface to that solid if I want to do something to a solid you have to be in part design <clears throat> And uh, I know it may not look like it, but I promise you that's tangent up there. So, in the features, we have transform and refine, which is always one of those two. I always get them confused, but I think it's under the transform command. I'm looking for the split feature. Now I don't see it, ironically. <clears throat> um, maybe it's in tools? No.
I am looking desperately for the split feature. Why don't I see you? It should be in review. No, it should be in refine. That's what throws me. It's I'm going to, I guess, transform it by splitting it. I'm going to split the solid. And this is okay. It's going to automatically default to the part body. Here's my split, and I want to split to this extrusion. So this pop-up window comes up, and it asks for a splitting element. The splitting element is the surface. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> and before you say, okay, identify the arrow. If I say okay right now, it's going to keep that portion of the solid, which I did not mean to do. So I can double click the split and invert the arrow by clicking on that arrow and hit okay. We used to be able to preview to make sure it's right, but just got to watch for the arrow now. Hit okay. And then I can hide my geometrical set. Okay. Now why? Oh, that sketch should have been up here. And I'll try and drag and drop it up here, and it won't let me do it. <clears throat> okay, this definitely, I thought I was in the geometrical set when I created that spline or that arc. I was not paying attention. All right, once I've done that, I'm just going to hide this for now. Actually, maybe I better show this if I can. Nope, I can't change that. Uh, for some reason, sometimes it won't let me drag and drop into other geometrical sets, which, by the way, this is supposed to be renamed to Construction Geometry, all caps, underscore. <clears throat> and that's what Construction Geometry is for. Anything that's not part of the solid goes in the construction geometry. Now, I will finish this off with the fillet command, which you guys have just recently learned, which is under uh, refine. Under refine, you'll find edge fillet. And I grab this edge. And that fillet radius is 1.38, which is not 1.38. It's one plus three divided by eight, so that's one and three eighths, or 1.375, not 1.38. 1.38 will give you the wrong answer for this exercise. You must use one and three eighths. You need to identify and learn to identify an ANSI drawing going to two places, what these really mean in fractions, okay? So all these parts were built using fractions. 0.38 is 375. Okay, 0.13 is one eighth of an inch. So you got to make sure you adjust accordingly. This edge here is one plus three eighths. I hit tab, and it shows me 1.375. I select OK. Now I have a hard time visualizing that fillet. So what I like to do is change the view under the view mode. Change that to with hidden lines or lines with edges. So that's one I like, so I can just kind of get my bearings where those edges are on that fillet. I'll go back to my refine, fillet, and grab that edge. Select OK, because it remembered the last radius I typed in. And now I've got the part with this radius up here. OK, and then I cornered those edges off. The problem here, I hope some of you are biting your tongue going, no, that's wrong, that's wrong. We don't want to have two fillets in this tree that are 1.375. That just makes your tree a mess. If I had that all over the place, your tree gets so long and so confusing. The easiest thing to do is same size radius for the most part. Try and group them, especially if it's a logical feature. Try and group them together. So I'm going to remove this. So you might be asking, well, how do you make this fillet one? 
Well, if you had completed my fillet demo, you'll know. You just double click the existing fillet. It goes back in time as if you didn't say OK yet and add more edges to fill it. So I'll add that edge, select OK. And now I have both corners, this one over here and this one over here, being represented in one edge fillet in the tree. That will make it easier for me to come back and modify and simpler, simpler to view later on down the road. Alright, that concludes part two. We'll add slots and holes to continue on in the following demos.